Hi guys, this is Sadiq from Dwebin.com and in this video, we'll show you how to install the E operating system onto your OnePlus 9 and OnePlus 9 Pro. So what exactly is an EOS? Well, EOS is an open source operating system for Android phones, which has been made from Lineage OS and AOSP and is completely de-googled, meaning there is no Google apps, no Google services and no Google framework. Even the sending of data to the Google server is either disabled or has been randomized. Apart from that, it also offers non-Google default online services, which I will talk about. So regarding the Google features, some of them are as follows. It uses the non-Google search engine. Apart from that, the Google services are replaced by Micro G. Likewise, all the Google apps are removed. And instead of that, you will get an open source application for all of them, except for the Maps app. For Maps, it uses a different Maps app which is not open source. You could read more about that Maps app in a separate link. Rather, why is a closed source app and more about the privacy if you want. But apart from the Maps app, all the other apps are open source in nature and there will be no Google apps in this ROM. Then no use of Google servers to check connectivity. Likewise, NTP servers are also not there from Google. The DNS default servers are also not from Google. Geolocation is also used via the Mozilla location services. Apart from that, it uses its own hosting service, which is a Munera cloud and has all its own drive, mail, calendar contacts and all such stuff. This is based on the Nextcloud, Postfix, Dovecote and only Office services. And it does not make use of any Google services from here as well. Now comes the list of installed apps. Well, this is something which might be a cause of concern for some user. While all these apps are open source and none of these apps belong to Google, but as you might see, it exists quite a lot of apps which are pre-installed onto the ROM. Well, if you want, you may disable or remove this app via ADB command. That's not a cause of any concern, but still that will require additional effort. So with that said, as you could see, the web browser is a deep Google fork of Chromium built from Bromide. Even the mail app, messaging app, camera app is a fork of open camera. Dialer app is also the calendar. All of these apps have been replaced from the Google app and has been replaced by its open source alternative. Except for the Maps app, as I have already told you, told you the Maps app is used by Magic Earth, which is a closed source. But apart from that, everything is open source. If we talk about the Play Store, then it has its own store, which is known as App Launch. And from there, you could get hold of all the apps which are there on Google Play Store, as well as all the apps which are there on the FDroid. FDroid is an open source marketplace. Likewise, you could also install all the available PWA apps as well. So all these apps are part of the App Launch, which is the marketplace or the app store for the E operating system. Then it has a few other apps as well. So these apps comes pre-installed and all of them are open source except for the Maps app. And you will not find any Google apps on your phone as such. So guys, on that note, let me now show you the installation steps. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. Moreover, you will have to be on the Android 13 firmware. If you're currently on Android 14, then you could refer to my guide and do a downgrade to Android 13. I have made a separate guide and th this guide is for all the OnePlus phone. I've also made a video. So you could refer to all any of these six methods and get the job done to do a downgrade. And once you're on Android 13 and you have taken a backup, then let's get started. First off, you will have to get hold of Android SDK platform tools. So get it from here and extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. In my case, I've done the extraction in C drive. And these are the files of platform tools. Once that is done, your next course of action is to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required to execute ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now carry out both this task. For that, go to settings menu, then go to about device and go to version and tap on build number seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now in developer mode. So go back, again go back, then go to additional settings and you should now see developer option, go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone, tap on OK. You might get an RC key prompt as well. So in that case, tap on allow. And with this, debugging is now enabled. So let's verify the same. For that, go to platform tools folder address bar, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch command prompt inside platform tools. Now type in ADB devices and make sure that you are getting an ID. 
if you are not getting any id then unplug and replug your phone from the pc disable and re-enable usb debugging tap on evoke usb debugging use the official cable that came with your phone and use the usb 2.0 port on your pc so carry out these usb tweaks and make sure that you are getting an id once you are getting this id your next course of action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone do note that doing so will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well so if that's well and good then you could refer to my guide and the video and get this job done in short you have to boot your phone to fast boot mode and then use the fast boot flashing unlock command after that highlight the unlock the bootloader option via volume key and press the power key to confirm with this the bootloader will be unlocked so once again enable usb debugging and then let's move ahead with the next step so now you will have to get hold of the rom and the recovery files so get them from here depending on your phone once you have got the file it will be something like this let me show you both the file will be in a zip format the rom and the recovery you will have to extract the recovery file so let's just extract it keep the rom file in the zip format it's obvious because the roms are in the zip itself but you will have to extract the recovery file upon extraction you will get these files so some are the sha as you could see this file so we don't need the some files these are only needed to verify the credibility of the files which are not required we only need to flash the img files these four files so what you have to do is copy these four files and transfer the files to the platform to folder on your pc again i am repeating you have to transfer just the img files and not the dot sha files simply ignore those files and only transfer the img files once that is done you will also have to transfer the rom file to the platform tools folder so let's get that job done as well now for the ease of convenience let's rename all this file to something shorter so in case of dtbo let's just rename it to dtbo.img then in case of recovery let's rename it to simply recovery.img likewise in case of vb meta let's rename it to vb meta and for vendor boot let's rename it to vendor boot vendor underscore boot so vendor underscore boot and all of them are img likewise let's rename the rom file to something shorter and more meaningful so let's rename it to rom and the complete name becomes rom.zip so make sure that the naming are as follow ddbo.img then recovery.img vbmeta.img and vendor underscore boot.img and the rom.zip once you have done the rename and transfer all the files to the platform to this folder let's now proceed ahead with the next step so now you will have to boot your phone to fast boot mode for that type in adb reboot bootloader and hit enter and your phone will now reboot into the fast boot mode it will take only a few seconds so let's just wait for that to happen and then we will move ahead with the next step so it's now in the fast boot mode now type in fast boot devices and make sure that you are getting an id if you are not getting any id then you will have to install fast boot drivers for that i made a guide and a video on the same you could refer to my guide and get the job done once you have installed the drivers right click on the windows icon and select device manager then expand the android phone section and make sure that your phone is being shown as android bootloader interface so this as well as the serial id next to fastboot signifies that your pc is able to read the phone in fastboot mode and we are now good to go ahead so guys let's now move ahead with the next step so now let's start with the flashing process okay so one more thing just to be on the safer side we will wipe the super partition using the super empty img file this is not compulsory but optional but i always do so because if you don't wipe the super partition then you might get the error 7 this error 7 usually happens when you do an adb side load of a custom rom so to avoid that from happening it's highly recommended that you do so from here itself so for that i have linked the super empty img file in the download section get it from here it's for the lineage os rom as you could see that's not a cause of any concern because this super empty img file works across all the aosp and custom roms but just keep in mind it's only for the oneplus 9 pro similarly you may get hold of the same file for your oneplus 9 as well let me show you go to your oneplus 9 and the uh, this is a super empty img file for the oneplus 9 so get hold of the super empty img file and once you have got the super empty img you will have to transfer it to the platform this folder on your pc so just a minute let me download this file as well so it will take only a few seconds 
and this is the file so copy the file from here and transfer the file to the platform tools folder let's paste it here once that is done let's rename it to super underscore mt dot img and now we'll flash this file using the cmd window so let's get started i'm again saying this is not compulsory the flashing is optional but it is done it is done just to avoid the error update 7 status 1 you may read more about this issue in this guide if you want but as of now let's wipe the super version as well so you copy this command and paste it in the cmd window and hit enter and it will now wipe the super partition once that is done we could now move ahead and flash the rest of the files easily without any issues so first off let's flash the dtbo file so type in this command and hit enter it will now flash it once that is done you will now have to flash the vbmeta.img so again copy paste the command and hit enter next up you will have to flash the vendor boot file so copy the command from here and paste it and hit enter it will now flash the vendor boot as well after that we will have to flash the custom recovery to the boot partition because the oneplus 9 and oneplus 9 pro does not have a recovery partition so we'll use the boot partition to flash the custom recovery so copy this command and paste it in the cmd window once that is done hit enter the flashing will now start and it could take up to around five to six seconds only once that is done you will then have to boot your phone to, to just newly flash recovery for that just use the fast boot reboot recovery command so let's just wait and as you could see the flashing is now done so let's boot our phone to this recovery and hit enter fast boot reboot recovery our phone will now reboot to the newly flash recovery it will take only a few seconds so let's check out the eos recovery and then we'll move ahead so as you could see we are inside the eos recovery from here your first course of action is to do a format data so select factory reset then format data factory reset and again select format data this will wipe off all the data from your phone and as you could see we have got a data wipe complete message once that is done go back and now you could do the side load of the ROM file so select apply update then choose apply from adb and with this your phone is now in the side load mode so open cmd window and type in adb devices and make sure that you are getting the side load keyword as you could see over here so let's now side load the ROM file for that type in adb side load and the name of the file which is rom.zip and hit enter and the side loading will now start it could take up to 8 to 10 minutes so let's just wait for the time frame so guys as you could see as soon as the progress bar reaches the 47 percent mark in the cmd window you will get a prompt on your phone it's asking if you want to flash any additional packages or not so if you want to flash any other zip file you will then have to tap on yes and then your phone will reboot to the aost recovery and from there you may do an adb side load of the required zip file on the other hand if you don't want to do a flash any zip file any mod file then simply tap on no and you will be taken to the recovery home page and from here you may now simply select the reboot system now and your phone will reboot to the os so just to repeat once you reach that prompt if you want to flash any other zip file then tap on yes and your phone will reboot to recovery from there you may do an adb side load of the required zip file and then reboot to system on the other hand if you don't want to flash any other zip file then simply select no and then select reboot to system and your phone will now boot to the os do keep in mind that the first boot up will take up some additional time this is completely normal and nothing to worry about if you see the boot animation as is the case with my phone then this signifies that the flashing has been done successfully on the other hand if you see an update error 7 then you will have to flash the wipe super md img file to fix this issue so with that said we are now inside the rom file so let's set it up as of now i will simply skip the initial setup process and take you to the os and let me skip the fingerprint as well so let's skip this as well and let's start the os so with this we are now inside the os and in fact this is the first time that i'm using this os as well and as i've told you before this is a non-google ecosystem with no google app packages and service and except for the maps app all the other apps are open source so that's also quite good to see and in this section you could see the suggestions then my cloud account 
regarding the my cloud let me repeat once again the my cloud is being used via the i have listed that so it's using the murena cloud which consists of its own drive mail calendar contacts note task and office apps and it's built upon using the next cloud post fix dove cot and only office apps then you have the advanced privacy policy you may select the denied trackers location also you may fake the location in this case the live location will be faked if you want to do so then apart from that you may also fake your real ip address the first one is regarding the trackers and they are denied they are turned off by default and you may also fake the location and the ip address then it's the weather app which you could tap and set up using the gps and you may also make some changes to the recent app screen and add mm -hmm. and you may add new widgets to the screen as well as you could see there are quite a few widgets that you could add here so apart from that let's access the home screen and this is the app launch which i have told you from here you could install the apps of your choice the google play store f twide as well as the pwa apps then let's go to the settings menu and from here you may install the updates directly ot updates then apart from that we have the accounts option it has its own accounts and password save manager then the network tweaks connected devices apps section then uh, notification sections notification history app bubbles these options are similar to the one which we see in the stock pixel ui battery storage display wallpaper and style so there there is exists the dark theme as well then you may add shortcut to the lock screen to the both left and right shortcut as you could see from here apart from that you have the wi-fi icon you may select from these icons so it has some level of customizations as well then these are the font style that you could choose from and apply them apart from that you have the icon shapes as well which you could choose so this is the one let's go with this one so and then it's the same pixel ui with the and so this is a new feature advanced level of privacy by default i enable all these three features the real ip address is still showing us loading because currently i am offline with that said you could see that manage you could manage all the app trackers from here then you could manage the app permission sets from here as well allow or deny the app request then manage your location and set any new location or use a random location or you may manually assign a location of your choice in the map as well then apart from that you may tweak your ip address from here and there are a few system tweaks as well so it does not use the google services but it uses the micro g as you might be aware then from here you may verify the google safety net test as well so the device attestation is turned on so you might be able to use the banking and payment app of your choice so google device registration is there as well you have a unique serial id for each phones and apart from that there are a few gesture tweaks and system profiles and buttons is the same as all the others phone and as you could see it's the oneplus 9 pro running the android 13 build so guys on that note i round off this video if you have any queries with regards to this rom or its feature do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching